Hi guys, alright, so before I even get started, I want to give this guy all the credit. His name is Mohammed Agauzi, and I watched his video and I learned a lot of awesome techniques from him. So I'm basically resharing some information right now, but I am adding some information on top of this as well. Alright, so I'm going to be showing you how to even prepare these butterflies so that you can export them out as an FBX and use them in other programs. And I'll show you some of my camera settings here as well and the lighting that I've set up uh, for the scene that you guys see over here. And I'll show you in the camera settings how I apply a little bit of motion blur just to make the wings look a little bit more uh, believable as well. So at the end of this, you'll be able to create the butterflies that you guys have seen over here. You'll be able to create multiple or different speeds of the overall flapping for the wings. And uh, we'll even get a butterfly to follow a path. And I'll show you how to prepare this for an FBX and to export it out. And just a little bit of the camera settings and the lighting. So I hope you guys are ready. And let's get started. Okay. Alright, so I've got everything set up for you guys over here. If you've downloaded the textures and butterfly body folder, you'll see all of these uh, images over here and the OBJ. So I'm going to go into Cinema 4D, drag and drop this OBJ into my workspace. Over here I'm going to click on No, and these are going to be my import settings. Right, so this was just a quick stylized, very low poly. I wasn't going for anything realistic, uh, but it is a butterfly body and we need this type of geometry in our scene to make those wings look more believable. So the wings are actually going to be applied onto a plane. So if I go back to our fold over here, you can see the way I actually created uh, these maps uh, is from this original image of the Morphodidius. I just took this into Photoshop and I basically cropped only one side of the wing because that's all we need because in Cinema 4D we'll be using the symmetry tag to create the other side of the wing and this one's got obviously the wing itself with all of its color and the background is white and then I use that same image to create the opacity of the alpha mask so I made the wing white and the background is black so whatever's black in this image is going to be invisible and whatever's white is going to be visible in our scene and then I generated this normal map using a program called Crazy Bump and having this normal map applied onto our plane and onto our wings is basically just going to add a little bit more surface detail onto the wings instead of it looking completely flat. So that normal map is just going to help to push uh, the realism of the wings a little bit further. So that's how I just created those maps. Super simple. So yeah, let's continue. Like I said, we're going to be using a plane and the overall dimensions of our diffuse is rectangular. So I'm going to try and shape it as close as possible to this rectangular image, but of course we can keep modifying it and editing it when it's actually applied onto our butterfly. And so I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Our butterfly body, I'm actually going to make this a lot smaller. All right, so these wings are going to be quite big on our butterfly over here. So this is going to be one of our wings. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating the shader. Okay, so I'm going to go to create shader octane material. I'm going to make this a glossy material here by diffuse. I'm going to load in an image texture and then I'm going to drag and drop our diffuse over here. I'll click on no. All right, the specular, I'm going to bring this down to a darker gray because I don't want my specular highlights to be too intense, but I do want some specular highlights on there. They just need to be subtle. The roughness, I'm just going to bump this up a little bit and now over here by the normal, go to image texture. Let's drag and drop our normal into that box and then the opacity which is going to be our probably our most important map over here just drag and drop that over there and now we can drag and drop that onto our plane so if I go to oh and our wing is facing the not the correct way so we'll just go to rotate and rotate that 180 degrees okay Okay, so that's rotated the correct way. Now, if I go to plugin Cinema 4D Octane and open up the live viewer, here we go. Now, I want to show you something why this opacity map is so important. So let me go ahead and disable that. Let's create a plane in our scene quickly. Just scale it up and create another octane shader. And I'm just going to make this black just so you guys, okay, you can already see what I mean by that opacity map. Without the opacity map being applied, we can see the entire plane with this butterfly texture being applied onto it, right? So we've just seen the diffuse over here. But with that opacity applied, it 
basically cuts out like I mentioned earlier all of the black region and, and it just leaves in the white region now with butterfly wings they tend to be a little bit transparent so I don't want I want this mix value to I just want to decrease it a little bit which means that we will be able to see through these butterfly wings a little bit and like I said they'll be a little bit transparent uh, which adds a little bit more to the overall realism of that butterfly wing okay so that's going to be the start and you can see it's already starting to take shape all right so I just went back to the black material and changed it to a glossy material and added some roughness and what's cool is we can actually see the shadow here and the shadow is the exact same shape of our butterfly wing so I thought that was actually really cool how it knows to eliminate the rest of the plane and even the shadow that's being casted is the exact same shape of this butterfly wing so a really nice little detail uh, with this rendering engine called Octane Render okay so let's go ahead and uh, let's detail the body of our butterfly now I did decrease the size of this body a little bit I don't want it to be too big so just go to your butterfly material control C control V let's drag and drop that onto the body All right I'm gonna go to the opacity and clear that because we don't want any opacity on the butterfly body let's go to the diffuse go to the UV transform All right and here by the scale X Y and Z let's put that on 33 Right, so that's going to make the body brown. It's just referencing uh, the brown area from this material. And we are good to go. Okay, so we've got the body textured on our butterfly. Now let's go ahead and bring some light into our scene. So I'm just going to bring a standard area light and let's place it above our butterfly. Right, just quickly, just so we have some light in our scene. Now we can go to the octane light settings and maybe bring that down just a little bit right so we've got some light being cast in our scene over here and this almost looks like those do they do taxidermy for butterflies <laughs> I, I don't know what's the correct term for that but you know that, that like museum where they have all of those butterflies yeah it kind of kind of reminds me of that anyway let's take our butterfly and let's duplicate it and put it on the other side okay so to do that uh, first thing we need to do is we've got our plane over here we just need to press C to make it editable then we need to go to mesh access center and over here we need to put this on 100 and then click execute so what that's basically going to do is it moves our pivot point right to the edge over here uh, which is perfect that's exactly where we want it then we want to create a symmetry and drag our plane as a child of the symmetry and now there we go now we've basically duplicated the butterfly plane now if I just move along this axis I can control the direction of this and if I click on symmetry I'm just gonna go ahead and position it exactly where I want it to be All right click on the plane bring those wings in a little bit closer and there we go maybe I can move the symmetry up a little bit and now we officially have those symmetrical butterfly wings okay alright so here by my octane light I just turned off the camera visibility so that it's hidden within the render okay and now to animate these wings we're going to be using the power of a cinema 4d vibrate tag uh, to basically create some random rotation on this plane and it's super powerful and it's incredibly easy to create uh, basically the animation for the wings so go ahead select your plane right click cinema 4d tags click on vibrate and over here we want to enable rotation we want to put this on zero and then we want to make sure we're putting this on minus 70 okay and then the frequency is going to determine how fast or how quick these wings are actually going to end up flapping so I want mine to be quite slow I'm going to put it on one and now if I click on play these wings are already animated but you'll see that it's intersecting with the bottom plane so to fix that let's go back to frame zero all you have to do is uh, select your plane go to rotate and you want to make sure the starting rotation for these wings is up here and then create a keyframe so now if I click on play there we go these wings are officially animated now over there you saw that these planes actually intersected each other so I want to make sure that my starting angle is maybe not that high so I'll bring it down just a little bit more and then create a keyframe there click play 
uh, and it will probably not intersect with the floor. And there we go. That is perfect. And now you can see, if you guys see these weird blue glitches in the render, don't worry about that. That's just the render processing uh, that bounce light from the blue wings on the plane over here. You can see as soon as I pause the render, we'll let it calculate a certain amount of samples. Uh, we can see that blue region over here. So don't worry about those weird glitchy effects. They won't be in your renders unless your samples is like extremely low on something like 12. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, but you can see by the way we created the shader earlier. Remember what I said about here with the opacity bringing down that mix value. We can now see through these wings a little bit, which indicates that these wings are very, very thin and they're quite uh, transparent as well. So that's how you create this wing animation. It's literally that simple, guys. All right, so something you're going to notice is I'm going to let it go through all of the frames when it gets to frame 90. You see that it doesn't loop as seamless and as smooth as possible. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm actually going to be baking this into actual keyframes, right? And by baking this into keyframes, that means you'll also be able to export this out as an FBX and use it in other programs. So this is going to be a really cool technique uh, that's going to allow us to use this outside of Cinema 4D as well. So what we want to do is we want to go to Window, go to Timeline Dope Sheet, here by the Plane, Make sure that's selected, go to functions, bake objects, and we just want to bake the rotation and animated parameters from 0 to 90. Click on OK, and now you can see we officially have keyframes. Right, so this is going to require a little bit of cleanup just to ensure that it loops seamlessly. So we can see when it gets to 90, it goes all the way back to 0. Right, so maybe over here it's at 53.106. Maybe at frame zero, I want it to be at that exact same value. So I'm just going to click on apply, create a keyframe. Oh, and make sure you see when we actually bake those keyframes, it created a duplicate of that plane. So this is the duplicate with the baked keyframe. So we don't need this anymore. Right, we don't need this anymore. But if you're going to create multiple versions of this of the butterfly, just make sure you have all of these pieces selected and just duplicate that. All right, so just so you have the vibrate tag and you can put different values for different wing animations. But I'm going to go back to the original one over here and just delete this because we only want the baked version in our scene. Okay, so I'm going to take this, put it in a null, group it, and just hide it because we're just working on this one. Okay, so frame zero is now at the exact same angle as the last frame, but you can see it, it's pretty abrupt. It goes from 53 all the way to 27. So to make this a little bit more smooth, I'm actually going to delete a couple frames over here in this animation. All right, so I'm going to select all of these and delete them. And let's see where the next frame is, where it goes up. So over here it starts going up to 52. So I'm going to delete all of these frames. And now if I play this animation, you can see there's, there's a longer pause over there, but it goes back to the original animation and it looks a little bit more natural. Right? Instead of having that abrupt change in the overall rotation of the wings. So it will require a little bit of cleanup uh, just to get these animations to loop and look a little bit more natural. Uh, but that's cool. That means you can customize the animation as well and get it to look exactly the way you want it to be. All right, so we've created our butterfly with this idle animation, uh, which is perfect. So now, of course, if you guys wanted to create a pack of these butterflies, you will go through the same process. That's why I duplicated this earlier. And so I'm actually going to hide this, so now I can unhide this butterfly that we created earlier and I'm going to delete this one that had baked frames because this one has the original vibrate tag on it. Now you can go back in here, you can change the frequency, right? And this is to add or just create variation with these butterflies. And then again, once you bake this, uh, in order to fix that, you know, making it, in order to make it loop a little bit more seamlessly, you see that it required a little bit of cleanup, just deleting some frames in the beginning and making sure frame zero and the last frame were the exact same 
uh, rotation with the angle uh, but yeah that's it okay so let's go ahead and create a butterfly that's actually going to be flapping its wings like crazy like it just got an adrenaline shot and we're going to make that actually follow a path and fly around in our scene so we're going to use this exact same butterfly so to make these wings flap all you have to do is click on regular pulse there you go now I'm going to actually hide our plane over here because this is going to be a butterfly that's going to be flying in our scene. All right, this is going to be flying in the air. And now maybe the overall um, speed of these wings is not quick enough for you. Then just put this on something like four. Okay, and again, when you bake this, you're going to have to just clean up some frames to make it a little bit smoother. But it's literally as simple as that to make these wings flap. Okay, so how do we actually make this follow a path, right? Because currently it's just flapping its wings in a static position. So let me show you how to actually make this butterfly fly around in your scene, in your scene and continue flapping its wings. So before I actually make it follow a path, I actually noticed something. And that is during this animation with the wings flapping really fast, the planes actually start uh, overlapping each other so like i mentioned earlier in order to fix that go back to frame zero select the wings and in this case we want to make sure that these are down a little bit more and then just create a frame and to see the true speed of these wings because remember when i had the live viewer open here and i clicked on play i'm not seeing the proper speed of these wings pause your live viewer and then play it here within the workspace to see exactly how fast these wings are actually flapping okay all right, so let's make this butterfly follow a path. It's going to be super simple. We're basically going to be using the pen tool. But before we do that, I'm actually going to go to my symmetry, right click, and I want to place this within a null. Okay. And then over here, I'm going to go back to my vibrate tag. Let's put this on 4.5. So that's going to be quite fast. Okay. And now we're just going to use the pen tool. And if you left click, your first point is going to be your starting point. And now if you hold on the left mouse button, you're going to be creating some curvature. And you definitely want some curvature along your path. You don't want any sharp or abrupt turns like that. The animation is just going to look really strange. So now you can decide exactly what you want your path to look like. All right, so you can see I'm going towards the end. And now my last point is going to be my end point, but I want it to end exactly by my starting point. And now if I click over here, I can go back, select points, move them around click on these black anchor points and adjust the shape of the curvature and you can completely decide how you want this path to actually be okay so there we go right so now here by my null I'm gonna right click go to cinema 40 tags I'm gonna create a line to spline and now here by the uh, what you call it the line to spline tag I want to drag and drop the spline into the spline path so there we can see it snapped the spline path and now if I move the position over here, you can see it's following the path. But one thing you'll notice is this butterfly is not really following the angle of the path. So make sure you turn on, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this word, tangent, tangential. I'm probably butchering that word right now, but there we go. And this is just going to look a lot more natural. So ideally what you would want to do here is on frame zero, you place a keyframe. And then on frame 90, oops. On frame 0, you want to place a keyframe. And then on frame 90, you want that to go all the way back to 100. And then place another keyframe. Okay? And now if your butterfly is basically going in reverse, like there's the body over here, you just switch these keyframes around. And there we go. Now it's actually following the correct direction. But it's literally as simple as that. So if I click play, there we go. We've got our butterfly officially following a path that we drew out all right so here's something very important to keep in mind when you want to prepare this as an fbx so before you even bake your frames right you want to remove this out of the symmetry uh, the symmetry object over here right so that symmetry object is just we're going to use it as an indication to see how this looks when it's symmetrical right and we've got these wings flapping but when we want to export this out of here uh, we have to go a little bit of a different route. If you're just going to stay in Cinema 4D, this doesn't apply to you at all. Uh, but if you want to prepare FBX, this is what you have to do. Select both of these objects, remove it from the symmetry. 
right? So you just have one side. And you want to make sure you still have this tag visible, right? So now we need to create the other side of our wing over here. Okay, so you want to select this, Control C, Control V. Then you want to rotate this to the other side. All right, we can move it a little bit. So it's not completely overlapping the other one. We actually do want a little bit of space. Okay, once you're happy with the placement, I'm going to go ahead and create a keyframe right over there. And you can see it's zero over here. This went like this. So I just want to move my butterfly right over there. Let's go to flap one, move it closer to this side, and then create another keyframe. So now they should be right. So if we export it with symmetry, this is exactly what we are going to get, this weird orientation in another program. So since we still have this vibrate tag, and this is on minus, you want to remove the minus, so that becomes a plus, and now you'll get the same wing animation. It's super, super important that you do this. So when you're saving this out now, right, we've got fast flap left, and we've got fast flap right, and then the butterfly body. So you want to go ahead and we're going to bake the frames for both of these. So I'll select both of them, go to window, go to timeline dope sheet, go to functions, bake objects. And we're going to bake the rotation in the animated parameters. We can bake the position as well from 0 to 90. And again, if you need to go and clean up any animation, make sure you do that. And make sure it's exactly the same on both of them. Because they do have the same speed. It's just one of them is minus 70 the other, and the other one is 70. So we don't need that. We need the copies, which has the baked frames on it. So that's still good to go. And now we can go ahead and group these into a null, and we'll just say butterfly animated fast. So now that group contains both of the wings and the body. Now if I go ahead and export this out as an FBX, and I'm going to save this to the desktop. Here's my export settings. Um, we don't need to bake. Do we need to bake the cameras? Well, we'll leave that in. Everything else is fine. Click on OK. So now if I go to a program like Blender, I click New. Go ahead, Import FBX. Go to my Desktop, Import. Now if I click Play, there we go. It's exactly how it should be in another program. Okay, so very important that you follow that route because you don't want to export it with symmet that symmetry tag on. It's just going to mess up everything for you. So just please keep that in mind. All right, so we've reached the end of our tutorial over here. You guys officially know the techniques to actually go ahead and set this up, how to even clean up some keyframes to get it to look a little bit more natural and to loop more seamlessly, how to get butterflies to follow a path, and even how to export out of FBX. If you wanted to create an image like this, you can see I've just got a bunch of these different butterflies over here. And background just completely black. But again, it's up to you what you plan on doing here. But I just want to share a quick tip uh, that I think really helps to push the final render as well. Uh, over here, I've just got a basic octane daylight. So I set up a daylight. And then here's my settings for the daylight. You guys can pause here and see exactly the settings I'm using. And then I created a octane camera as well. That is basically a 50 millimeter. And then on the octane tag, uh, I've enabled some thin lens, which creates a little bit of um, what you call a depth of field. But that's obviously going to depend, be dependent on where your camera is being placed. Uh, but one of the most important things over here is the motion blur. All right. So with motion blur, my shutter speed is on 0 0.001. And this just adds a little subtle bit of motion blur to these wings that are flapping. But in order to get uh, the motion blur tag to work, you want to make sure on the actual wings themselves, right? You can see wherever I have a plane, that's the wings. I've created a tag over here, which is an, uh, an a, a octane object tag. So you'd go to the wings and you'd go to oct uh, octane object tag. Once it's applied, 
you want to go to motion blur and change that to transform vertex and then that's going to apply motion blur in your final render okay so 0 0.001 and the secret ingredient over here was just a little bit of motion blur and then I've got a little bit of bloom on here uh, you guys can choose how much bloom you want to be visible in your scene so that's how I just quickly I decided to light this scene and obviously if I rotate this up we can see the horizon over there but again this is a top-down camera view so it's up to you guys how you plan on using this and I'd love to see what you do anyway guys that's gonna be the end of the tutorial and as always thank you for watching my videos and tutorials feel, feel free to message me and actually show me what you guys have created with these butterflies as well I'd love to see what you've done Thank you to Muhammad again for sh uh, sharing those techniques. Like I said, I'm resharing information, but also adding some more information on top of that, like showing you how to prepare these butterflies so you can export it out as an FBX. Anyway, thank you for watching my videos and tutorials, guys. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials, and goodbye.